Hello everybody, Brad the Guitologist here, and in today's video we are going to follow the wiring of a three-prong cord in a vintage Fender amplifier. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please stick around. While wiring three-prong cords into vintage amplifiers is not exactly rocket science, it's fairly easy to do, uh, Fender amplifiers uh, pose a little bit more of a challenge because they have some additional components that are not present in other vintage amplifiers. Namely, they have an auxiliary plug here. Uh, they also have a polarity switch, uh, which is labeled ground uh, in a lot of models. They have a depth capacitor, which will need to be clipped out if you're um, putting a three-prong cord in. Uh, they have the standard uh, fuse holder, which we're going to keep in circuit. They also have a switch, of course. Uh, and uh, there are wires that go to and from the power transformer that need to be dealt with. Uh, here is the hole where we're going to install our new three-prong power cord. We clipped the old uh, two-prong power cord out, and the two prongs simply were tied here and here. And here is a look at, at a layout for a Princeton Reverb. Uh, amplifier and as you can see the wires do come in uh, from the two prong power cord and go to the auxiliary AC receptacle. Now some people choose to remove both the AC auxiliary receptacle and the uh, the polarity ground switch um, but we are going to leave in the AC receptacle and merely move the remove the ground switch and the death capacitor. Now the first thing you want to do obviously is you want to choose a nice heavy gauge uh, cord that is uh, 16 gauge or greater uh, is my recommendation. I have a 16 gauge here uh, that is 8 foot in length. Uh, you can get these fairly cheaply usually around a dollar or so a foot. The ends of the cords do not come pre-stripped so usually what I do is I get a standard uh, belt knife such as this. You'll want to measure out how much uh, you're going to need. In this case we're only going to need to go uh, to one of the lugs for the ground. Our ground is going to be on this lug I believe. I think that's probably a good spot for it. Uh, and then our other two leads are going to go to the auxiliary receptacle. So the longest we will need is uh, for the cord to come over here to the ground so we will measure from here to here more or less and we want to keep a little bit of the overall shielding on the inside so we're going to come and uh, start about right there and I'm not going to go deep with this I'm just going to get it started so just spin it like so again don't go too deep because you don't want to cut into the wires on the inside. You just want to get kind of get it started. And just just like that. So once you've gotten that started, you're going to need a wire stripping tool slash crimper or something like this. Uh, what you do is you want to use the biggest hole on this type of tool and strip that off. Usually uh, some the good cords will have uh, like a baby powder, talcum powder type substance in there. It makes it a lot easier to strip the wires off of there. And then of course you just come in, find the correct gauge on your wire stripper and strip off the ends of the wires like so. Next thing you're going to need to do is select a grommet uh, that will fit into the hole uh, that the wire comes into. And in this case, we're going to select uh, this grommet here, which is about the right size. This gives you your inner dimension and your outer dimension. And if you want to purchase this exact grommet set, uh, you can get these at Harbor Freight. I will put a link down in the description below. So once we've selected our, our grommet, we will install it into the chassis, like so. And we will run our wire.
wire through. In the case of the ground wire, we are going to attach it with the use of a terminal. Uh, this is the terminal set from which I'm going to choose. Again, I will put a link to this, uh, this or a similar terminal set down in the description. Uh, but I think what we're going to do is use one of these circular terminals in this application. So let's see what we have to choose from. We want something that's going to fit our bolt there fairly snugly. We don't want it coming loose on us. Let's see, that blue one is small. Let's see, it might be too small. Nope. That's going to fit nice and snug and not move around too much. So we're going to choose this one. First thing to do, slide it over the uh, ground wire. Um, we want to slide it up to the point where the wire pokes through and then bend it around. Now we're both going to crimp this uh, and solder it. So first thing to do is to crimp it. And since this is blue, we're going to use the blue dot on our crimper. So we'll crimp in this middle position. You can see a red dot, a blue dot, and a yellow dot. So that tells you where to crimp. We're going to crimp in the blue slot right there. So once that is nice and crimped, then you want to come back and just to be doubly sure, we are going to also solder this. Now, uh, we're going to kind of probably do this in midair. This isn't an ideal way to solder, but I think we'll be able to do it just fine. Okay, now that's soldered on real nice. And we can attach it. And in order to attach it, we're gonna get a uh, we're gonna get a nut that's the same size as the existing nut. As you can see here, our ground wire is now nice and secure. A typical auxiliary outlet on a Fender amplifier will have uh, two leads, two slots of course. Uh, one of the, those will be larger than the other. The larger of the two, which is this one in this case, uh, is the neutral, while the smaller one is always the hot. You don't want to get these mixed up. In this case, the neutral, the larger opening, is this one and you can see it's attached to this terminal so we need to make sure that our neutral wire goes to this terminal and we need to make sure that our hot wire which comes in here goes to this terminal the two wires that uh, come in are the ones we have left are white and black your black is always your hot and your white is always your neutral so in this case uh, our white is going to go here because this is the larger opening and our black is going to go here to this terminal because this is the smaller opening on the auxiliary socket. Okay, now on these auxiliary sockets there is a little hole here uh, that our wires can connect to so you can feed the lead through the hole and wrap it around, wrap it as tightly as you can, don't leave any excess, uh, don't leave any fraying going everywhere because as you can see there's a screw right here right next to this area uh, so if we have fraying on this and we allow that to to stand there's an outside chance that it might short out uh, to something so we don't want that to happen uh, make sure you wrap everything tightly uh, when you begin soldering 
make sure you first warm up the actual connection first before you add any solder. And then you come in with the solder. And make sure that um, everything is nice and warm. You don't want this to be what's called a cold solder. You want the solder to flow nice and evenly throughout all of the braids of this copper wire. And you will see it actually if you leave it on there for a second or two, you'll actually see it begin to soak in and kind of spread itself throughout the wire. So there's one connection down. Let's do the other one. Okay, I'm having a little bit of difficulty finding the hole uh, on this terminal. Um, and there's a temptation, you know, just to lay this up against there and just to solder, but you never want to do that. You want to make sure you get a good strong connection through the terminal hole and wrap it around. If you're having trouble getting either of your leads through the terminal, uh, sometimes it helps to remove the existing wire and uh, that allows you a little more access and then you can re-add the wire later so we're going to try it this way Okay, we're at least able to get it through there now. Okay, now we have our three wire uh, cord all soldered in. And before we forget, we are going to just do a quick test to make sure we haven't created any kinds of shorts. So what we want to do is get a uh, standard multimeter. Uh, we want to put it on resistance measurements. For ohms and we want to find the end of our power cord we will put uh, one lead up to one side and we will hook the other lead up to the other side and when we do that uh, if we have any shorts uh, it should tell us here now if we want to ensure that we have a short, we can turn the power switch to the on position and that tests out our power switch and the continuity of our primary of our transformer and everything else. Just the fact that we have a reading there when we flip the power switch tells us all that's working so far. We can also check uh, to make sure nothing is um, grounding out. So let's Actually, it'd be easier probably to hook up somewhere on the chassis. So we'll go up one side to the chassis, uh, and then we'll start out with that side, and then this side. And we have open lead in both cases. So that's good. All right, the next thing we want to do while we're thinking about it is to get a standard zip tie, uh, preferably something fairly heavy duty. And this is what I do. Now, not everybody does it this way, and I realize there's probably going to be some fender gurus come on this, uh, come on this video and ask why exactly I'm doing this. But um, the reason I'm doing it this way is because I like to use the grommets set up um, and uh, in order to do that, really, uh, we need to use a zip tie on the inside here so that uh, this doesn't get pulled out. Because the last thing we want to do is to rip any of these cables out. So uh, the way to prevent that is to take a zip tie, push it all the way to the outside, zip it up nice and tight. 
come in and clip off the excess like so. So that's going to keep uh, that's going to keep these wires from being pulled out of the back of the amplifier. We're also going to have a retainer on the cabinet itself that's that holds the cable. So if somebody does trip on this, there's no there's no possible way they're going to rip all these wires out and electrocute themselves or someone else. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do is come in here and remove all of the wiring associated with the uh, with the polarity switch. Now you can leave the wiring that you don't use. It's not necessarily uh, not necessary to remove it all from the amplifier completely, um, but essentially we're not going to use this, so we need to take this wiring out. So we'll get our soldering iron and this wire we're going to try to keep. So we will remove it for sure. Try to desolder it. That way, that way it's already stripped for us, and we don't have to worry about doing that again. Uh, we would do the same thing with the other lead that's coming from our hot wire, and it's going over here to the other side of the switch. And again, this is the polarity ground switch that we are removing from the circuit now. Uh, so we have our two wires, and as you can see at this point, uh, we have our power wires coming in here and here, and they're going nowhere else except through these two wires at the moment. So everything else here is disconnected. The next thing we want to do is we want to desolder this wire uh, from the tip of the fuse socket. And we will take the wire coming in from our hot lead, and again, that's the black lead. So find the wire that's attached to the black lead coming in, and that one is going to go right there in its place. So let's go ahead and solder that in. Make sure the connection's nice and secure. Next thing to do is to remove the black wire that's going to the transformer uh, from the from the ring of the fuse holder. Because we're going to do something different with that wire, and I will explain why in just a, in just a moment. Okay, so there's that one removed. And now we will remove the yellow wire that's going to the other side of the polarity ground switch. And we will go ahead and put it right over here immediately into the spot where the uh, black wire going to the transformer formerly was. And what I usually do is I use my soldering iron to get get the wire through and you can see it's poking poking down here it's not what we want we want to take that bend it up and around get our soldering iron again pull it through I even use sometimes we use my soldering iron to go ahead and push it back down and we will mix some uh, new solder in with the old solder to make sure we have a good solid connection Okay, so now what we have at the moment is we have our hot black wire coming in here uh, to the auxiliary terminal, uh, coming over here to the tip of the fuse holder. It goes through the fuse and then to the ring of the fuse holder, through this wire and to one side of the switch, 
When the switch is in the off position, it goes no further. When the switch is in the on position, it then can go through the black wire and into the transformer and then out again. This is the primary uh, lead, two leads of the transformer. This is our other end of the primary. And finally, all we need to do now is take our other lead that's coming from the white neutral wire, tie it to this black lead. But before we do that, we have an additional uh, lead that uh, we need to re just remove because it's just hanging loose and we're not going to use it. So we will remove that. You could clip it out or I'm just going to desolder it from this ground uh, terminal. So we remove that so it's not hanging. Uh, you can also, if you wanted to, you could e even take this black wire and unwind it and just tie it directly over here. Uh, but in this case... Um, this is just going to be a little easier, uh, so we will just leave it the way it is and uh, tie those two together, and I'll show you how that's done. Okay, for this, you're going to need some uh, shrink tubing, and you need to uh, get the appropriate size, and it needs to be the size that's just larger than the wires in question. And I think this piece right here is probably going to do the trick. So we will take our new piece of shrink tubing, and we will slip it over the yellow wire like so and push it all the way down because we don't want it anywhere near this point where we're going to be soldering because this will shrink up prematurely and you know how everyone hates premature shrinkage okay anytime you are attaching two wires together like this uh, you know I see so many times where people just take these wires and just kinda lay them across each other and blob a bunch of solder on there but that's not what you want to do you want to take a pair of pliers such as this and you want to do what's called J hooking and basically you want to form a J with each of these wires so there's a J on that one now and there's a J on this one now so we hook these two together like so and we will crimp these down as far as as far as as, and as tight as they will go now that's a good strong connection right there just like that even if I didn't solder that it would still be a good solid connection most likely but uh, we're definitely, obviously, going to solder it also. First thing to do, heat up the work. And use your solder. Apply it. Secondary. Leave, leave the heat to it just a moment longer than you think you should. Make sure it gets in there properly. Now we'll take our shrink tubing from way back here and move it into position so that it covers the area now some fancy people have a heat gun but I usually just take my soldering iron to my shrink tubing and shrink it all down okay there are all of our connections made last thing to do here is just to tuck everything up underneath so it's nice and out of the way and uh, if you'll notice also, we didn't, we didn't have to even touch the death cap. Uh, we didn't have to clip it out or anything like that uh, because we also removed this uh, polarity switch. The death cap is, is tied here. So if anybody ever wanted to rewire this back to stock, they could do so fairly easily. Uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. That is how you put a three-prong cord on a typical vintage Fender amplifier. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button below, and for now, you all take care.